Hey friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to Hot Takes. This is where we look at your hot takes, so be sure to sub to the channel and hit that notify bell so that you're always notified whenever I get a hot takes thread up. You guys left a bunch of them. We're going to get to some of them. First up, from Cody Miles, who you may or may not know is our amazing Big Blue Predictions form wizard over at the Going and Raw stuff. Cody here says, hot take. A lot of you have Jericho takes this week uh, because he just won the Ring of Honor title for the second time inexplicably. Cody says, Chris Jericho is now surpassed. Go away, Heat, and is actively harming his legacy. I like that we're now crafting kind of a chart, uh, if you will, as to like, okay, well, somebody, you got your legacy. And then maybe you stick around too long and people are like, ah, eh, souring on you. And then you have actual legit go away heat. And now we're into harming one's legacy. When you look at legacy in pro wrestling, legacy, in my opinion, is uh, number one. Obviously, it's uh, a fairly nebulous thing. There are certain people whose legacies are kind of bulletproof, right? Like my opinion the Undertaker, right? I know that there's been a lot of discussion lately over uh, The Undertaker and his legacy. Now that this dude is just talking a lot, he's got a lot to say. He's got a lot on his mind. And given the current political climate, I know that there are people out there who on both sides, if you will, um, are actively discussing The Undertaker and uh, his current uh, podcast endeavors and uh, his entry into the political sphere, uh, having a former president, Donald Trump on his podcast. And, uh, I've seen this question of legacy come up and to, I'll be completely honest with you guys, in my personal opinion, even though I might not agree with the undertaker's politics, um, I kind of feel like his legacy is bulletproof. The guy was a fixture. He was a foundational piece of the WWF, WWE for an incredibly long period of time. The WrestleMania streak. I feel like people, when they discuss The Undertaker, at the end of the day, after he even retires his podcast or whatever, they're going to think of his contributions to the world of pro wrestling. Another name, Vince McMahon. I think that legacy, bizarrely, is a little bit more complicated given the severity of uh, the allegations made against him in this lawsuit. And now there's another lawsuit uh, with the quote unquote ring boys of the WWF from back in the day. And so I think Vince's legacy will probably continue to be eroded and chipped away at the more of these victims step forward and say, hey, what this guy did was really, really awful. I think that is a more complicated topic because I think that when you say the the name Vince McMahon, his contributions to pro wrestling come up, but also that is balanced out by some pretty horrific things he is alleged to have done uh, in these court documents. And I think the more of that that comes out, and then in particular, if there are charges brought against Vince, uh, then I think that'll hamper his legacy even more. Now, I think that legacy is also, I'll put it this, let me start by saying this. Legacy is simply the way a person feels about another person and their contributions towards a certain industry. That's where it starts. A person's legacy is sort of the collective thoughts. If everybody thinks this person did, or if the consensus you know, agrees that this person's contributions to a certain industry are, you know, paramount to that industry, that increases their legacy. Then they have a, distingu a distinguishable legacy. So it's sort of the consensus thoughts on a particular individual and their contributions to an industry. If those thoughts are incredibly positive and they're the understanding that, hey, they contribute a lot to that industry, that's your legacy, right? So we're going to define that first. So those are some extreme examples right there, right? The Undertaker recently getting into the politics thing. I kind of feel like if that's the long and short of it with The Undertaker, I think his legacy is probably intact. Hell, I'll be honest with you, even though I'm no fan of um, Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs, I think his legacy as the character Kane, especially because for a chunk of it, he was hidden behind a mask and it was very much a character he was playing. I feel like the character of Kane's legacy in WWE is probably 
people are able to separate if you're if you disagree with the man and his politics and all that people are able to separate out the two so there's some examples for you so let's talk about chris jericho who's seemingly to, this is kind of interesting because the names that i just mentioned have debatable legacies i think um based off of and same with hulk hogan not just what they did in wrestling, but moreover, what they did off camera, away from wrestling, right? Chris Jericho's legacy, basically, in the estimation of Cody Miles here, his legacy is being tarnished while still an active wrestler, which is incredibly interesting because you don't see that very often. He's maintaining a prominent role in a prominent wrestling company and just not being interesting and kind of, I think in, in a lot of people's estimation, chewing up time that could be spent elsewhere and sucking up the resources, if you will, uh, and not really helping anybody along the way or contributing in a positive manner to the stories of AEW, which is a drastic difference from where we were five years ago when he was one of the foundational pieces of AEW, their first world champion, and everybody was on the Jericho bandwagon. So this is an interesting situation and one that we don't see very often. It's the prominence of Chris Jericho that seemingly is harming and this newest gimmick, which seems to be born from a resentment of sorts towards the fans who have turned on Chris Jericho or who have tired on Chris Jericho. Do I agree with this? Is this a hot take? I, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of feel like it is when I look back now. And again, you start at the individual and then you build the consensus and therein lies the legacy as an individual myself. I look at things like his uh, feuds uh, with uh, the great cruiserweights in WCW, the the Dean Malenko stuff, right? The the Gilberg stuff. I'm not Gilberg. It was um, God. Who is his uh, Ralphus? <laughs> Ralphus, right? Um, when you look at all the fun stuff he did in WCW, when you look at his probably to this day the best debut in a company of all time, Chris Jericho arriving on Raw in 1999 and his promo battle with The Rock. When you look at that, does that now, do you view that in a different way given what Jericho is accomplishing now? It does seem, in my estimation, as an individual, a step uncooler at this point. You know, I look at that, I used to I used to be able to watch that Jericho debut all the time. Now I watch it, I'm like, eh, this is Jericho. And it's an amazing debut, the countdown and all that kind of stuff. And his song was just absolutely killer. That song was amazing, the Break the Walls Down one. And who knows, maybe if he goes back to WWF or WWE, it's WWE. Maybe if he goes back to WWE, he'll be able to, I don't know, fix his legacy, given where it currently seems to be headed anyways. I know he still has a lot of defenders. I understand that he's got a lot of people in his corner still, but there does seem to be, it's not quite the universal love that there was for Chris Jericho. I mean, his if wrestling had approval ratings, his approval ratings back in 2019 were probably off the charts. He was doing some cool shit. He was the first huge WWE name to go to New Japan of the modern era. That was kind of unprecedented. Um, he uh, uh, went to, uh, you know, help build AEW, obviously, and that was a really cool deal because at the time, AEW had a lot of great buzz behind it. But as time wore on and he didn't really do what he used to do really well, and that's reinvent himself, it just sort of, I think, soured on people. And then there was the whole Internet rumors situation, which... You know, the AEW really couldn't push back on, but I think left a sour taste in some fans' mouth. And I think it sort of grew from there. I don't know. It's, you know, it's an interesting situation to see how that go went down, how there were, you know, assumptions and rumors and 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 this, that, the other. And it kind of harmed Chris Jericho's reputation in the moment. And all Tony Khan really could say is I can't. I'm not going to respond to to unsubstantiated internet rumors, which at the end of the day, that's what they were. Um, and I think from there, 
it kind of did a disservice to to Chris Jericho's legacy, but also it he sort of doubled down on it by coming up with the learning tree gimmick and you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's been kind of a bizarre situation for him, but I feel like Chris Jericho himself has not really helped his own case. Um, and Tony Khan hasn't helped his case either. I do think for Chris Jericho it might be beneficial because in wrestling, as he knows, sometimes just going away is the best way to help your own legacy, is the best way to make people miss you. Maybe there's the concern on his part right now. If he goes away, he's not going to get the big pop on his return. People will just have to be happy that he's gone. But I don't know what conversations are happening behind the scenes there in AEW between Chris Jericho and Tony Khan. I really don't. It's a bummer. I was a big Chris Jericho fan, but now when I see him, I literally just... And that ladder match was really good. But did you really need Jericho? I know they got probably Death Before Dishonor coming up, and maybe the idea is, hey, let's sell some pay-per-view tickets. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I, I I am of the opinion, and granted, I don't watch Ring of Honor largely because besides Athena, which I really just want Athena on cable television because that's what I watch. But besides Athena, what is there in Ring of Honor really to watch? There's no buzz coming out of that promotion. None whatsoever. And if the idea is we want to sell some tickets to a pay-per-view, you got to put the work in and actually build the promotion. You know, I saw, I think, I think it was like Kate from Fightful had tweeted out something along the lines of why isn't Shane Taylor, why are they not, well, mentioning Shane Taylor as, as like a guy who probably should be a contender for Ring of Honor champion right now. I have no idea what Shane Taylor's up to these days because I don't watch Ring of Honor. I have no idea. And nobody ever clips anything with Shane Taylor in it. I really like Shane Taylor. And I think if he were a Ring of Honor champion, I, I maybe I'd be more inclined. I have an Honor Club membership. Maybe I'd be more inclined to tune in. If they treat a Ring of Honor like an actual brand, maybe I'd be more inclined to tune in. But that show has no buzz behind it whatsoever. So it's a complicated situation. The idea of legacy is kind of a nebulous one, but it does involve a general consensus and a lot of the consensus that I've seen out there. And granted, we all live in a bubble to, to some degree. A lot of the consensus out there is that the people are just tired of him. And yes, maybe he is actively harming his legacy at this point. I think that's a valid concern. I think at some point Jericho just needs to take that leap of faith and go away. And then when he's ready to come back, come back or when he feels like there is a demand for him come back this learning tree thing ain't it though I'll tell you what shotgun sean says an actual match between dom and Rhea needs to happen i feel like the long-term booking philosophy of triple h is really sort of killing the Rhea dom stuff right now Rhea's trying to hit that riptide or she was trying to hit that riptide and it keeps on being stunted I don't know, man. Maybe it, uh, sur- no, it's not going to be Survivor Series. I think Rhea's going to be involved in war games there. At some point, Rhea's got to hit a riptide. I would love to see this. I would love to see this. A match between Dom and Rhea. I would love to see that. I think people would love to see that. I know they want to stay away from intergender stuff, and I understand that point of view. I think this is one situation where you can get away with it. Jay Ralstonism says, I'm actually starting to like Solo's character now that both Usos are back. He's the little shit brother that's always wanted to be the big brother that calls the shots and he's hanging out with the fucked up cousins so he can win some fights. It's exactly what it is. And I agree. And I think a lot of people, I think a lot for a lot of people, the Solo we saw on Monday Night Raw with the tickets is the Solo we've been wanting to see. And maybe it's a matter of there are people now that he can work with that he can bounce off of the Usos and Roman. And that's why that's coming out. But I agree. I think this is the, so if you look, this is much closer. Just that one bit on Raw is much closer. And even on SmackDown to a degree is much closer to the Solo Sokoa that we saw back in NXT, which his story back then was really cool. He was the guy who was left alone. He was the odd man out. He was on his own island. He was the street champ, right? And, uh, And I wish they had brought a little bit of that. And I think that they're starting to reference that a little bit. But yeah, no, I, I enjoy what they're doing with Solo as of the last 10 days. Tyler Warden says, love him, love him or hate him. When here comes the money, hits the speakers, is appropriate to mark out like the unwashed savages we are. Eh, it's pro wrestling, man. You hear a theme. That's the power of a theme song right there, man. You hear even, dude, even when you hear no chance in hell, like people had a really hard time not popping, even though these horrible allegations came out about Vince McMahon. I know some of that is like the whole wrestling fan mentality. A lot of these wrestling fans are like, he's not proven guilty. Then you catch innocent, right? 
which is like half the people who say that don't understand the actual concept of what they're talking about. In any event, here comes the money. Yeah, man. I'll mark out big for just after the Vince McMahon documentary. If I hear here comes the money, I'll be happy when Shane comes out. I'll give him a standing O. Anyways, that's going to do it for hot takes that went long on the Jericho one. So this is, this is, you know, I didn't do a whole ton of them. Maybe I'll use the same thread for another one in a couple days. I'll do two, two hot take videos in, over the course of a couple days. Uh, anyways, hey, like I said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. I got to run to the basketball court because Larson's probably waiting for me right now. We're supposed to play basketball right now. So we'll see you guys around.